Peter Cow and the Bee Whisperer. It is February 16th, and look at this. In a bee suit, got a hive tool on my hand. My ha right hand has been empty for months. <laughs> and uh, finally, we're in the uh, bee yard again. There's bees flying around. We're looking around the yard, and the vast majority of the colonies are doing really, really well. Just taking the opportunity to heft some hives and any of my smaller hives in particular that there might be a risk that they're losing, that they're a little underweight. I brought some winter patties out here to top up their weight. Uh, so far, been through a few, few hives, found one that's dead, and I suspect we might find one or two more. But this is my sort of intensive care yard. If, if the hive, if a lot of these hives need a little bit of extra help, and if I'm going to lose hives, this usually is the yard that I would lose them in. So uh, I'm not too, I'm not concerned about that. In fact, what we have is a beautiful uh, result here so far for mid-February. So we're going through a few hives, having a look at uh, the activity, keeping an eye open for the po any possibility of, um, of uh, let's see, I'll have a quick look at here any possibility of pollen coming in I don't know of any witch hazel in the area but that could be in bloom by now um, there could be one or two things out there but I'm also starting to put the uh, pollen substitute out and we'll have a look at that before we leave I saw a B in it before and hopefully some activity is starting. I wouldn't expect we'll have any pollen flow of significance here until at least mid-March, but uh, we'll have a look. Let's uh, look inside this hive here. I haven't checked this one yet. cluster is occupying this sort of quarter of the hive. It is in a corner that I can see honey all to one side here, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a little bit of a bridge of, of a winter patty over that just to provide a bridge of food to the other side, because the only problem with the bees being in a corner is that they could have eaten their way into that corner and leave empty comb around them, and they can't cross that empty comb to get back to the honey. Now, if it had been a warmer day, I'd have moved a frame or two of honey from this side and put it on that side. But right now, what I'll do instead is I'll put some winter patty on it. So I'll put winter patty across here, and that provides a bit of extra resources to make sure that they can make it over to this side of the, this side of the hive without any problem. And for those of you that watch the channel regularly, and remember I had some hives where the lid blew off in that terrifically cold spell. Well, that's these bees over here. And yes, I know I haven't got it strapped down right now, but I've taken the camera off the top, so I don't have any worries that it's gonna blow off. But I've got a nice sized cluster, about six inches across and bees going in and out. In fact, I don't see a pile of dead bees. So it seems that they all made it through that experience of minus 50, minus 60 with no lid on the hive for two days. Amazing group of bees. Still good weight to them, as I like to feel. Nice size cluster, about the size of a basketball under there because this is just the top of it. And I could see honey all the way around it. Looks perfect. And I felt the weight of 
It still weighs a good 50 pounds or so. Plenty of honey in there. No need to do anything with these girls. Let's have a look at them again in a month. I don't see any activity on this one. And just because there's no activity doesn't mean to say that they're not alive. But it may be that the cluster is too small for them to be flying. This is a good day to test, can't find out because it's about 50 degrees, it's warm enough to have a quick look. In fact, we threw some food in here and it doesn't look like these bees made it. Yeah, they didn't make it. I'd thrown some extra food on here this fall because I was concerned about them and with good reason. They didn't, they didn't make it through the winter time. So that's the way it goes. You're gonna lose a few hives. Maybe more of concern is the fact that they've been pooing in the hive as well, but that can certainly come because the cluster is so tiny, they probably just never had the chance to, oh, um, to do a cleansing flight. Um, and there could have been other reasons why that cluster was tiny in the first place. I suspect they had some digestive issues in the fall. And so they just never got to a stage where they were viable for overwintering. So, things like that will happen. So I will, I'll leave this one in, these two in here. I'll take these clean ones. I might put them on another hive. So, that's too bad. But it's within the normal range. As I say, this, this yard had the bees of varying strengths. I didn't get a chance to consolidate hives in this yard. So I knew that a few were on the edge of whether they would make it through the winter time or not. Let's have a look. What I do like to see though, come and have a look over here. The bees have used a remarkably small amount of food um, compared to say Italians. So here we are middle of February and they're still, and this hive still exclusive, exclusively only using the bottom entrance uh, as opposed to using both entrances or just the top entrance. And this tells me that the cluster is still on average below the middle mark. They're not even using the honey yet in the upper brood chamber. They're, they're still using the honey in the lower brood chamber. It means that this hive has lots of honey left and I've tried tipping it and it still weighs a good 60 plus pounds. And so that upper brood chamber is still really full of honey. And they're using the nearest entrance, which is the bottom entrance. Had they been near, utilized a lot of the honey, or most of it, they'd be using this top entrance. So in the spring, you tend to see the bees using the top entrance because the cluster is up here. But they've not got that far yet, which is a sign both that it's early in the season, but it's also a sign that they haven't used much of the honey yet. Good signs. And let's also have a look at one of the other hives here that I, the unusual ones. We've got a long hive going here. Or I call it Oliver's Hive. We have our little greenhouse going underneath. And actually today is the first day that I've actually seen them flying in and out of this hive. I've seen dead bees in the front. I've known they've been okay. Um, in fact, a couple of days ago, we took a, uh, the cell phone and we put the app, it's called, what was it called? Fenix. 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 F-E-N-N-E-X, which is a kind of a microphone amplifier system. And we could put the cell phone in the entrance of the hive and we could hear the cluster humming away. And that was good to see. Well, we're at it. Let's just see what the temperature is underneath the hive here. 58. So 58 in our little greenhouse underneath. The air temperature out here is about 50, 51. So we are providing warmer air. Every sunny day, we're providing warmer air on the bottom side of this hive, which I'm sure is not hurting the bees at all. Good to see that.
Okay, so there's one other thing I want to show before we wrap up this particular video, and that's the pollen substitute feeder. Let's have a look at that. Now it really starts to feel like spring when you can put some pollen substitute out and the bees start feeding on the pollen substitute. Now it's very early and it's only just warm enough for them to take advantage of it, but I just love seeing them feeding on it. There's just a dried pollen substitute. I'm using Ultra Bee. And they kind of roll around in it. You see bees rolling on their backs. Then they brush it all off their bodies, pack it in their pollen baskets on their legs and head home. So in the middle of February, it's feeling really good. We've lost a couple of hives out back here, but I'd always expect to lose a few from this yard in particular. But uh, from what I can see, Still going to have about a 90% survivorship in this yard as things stand, and I'll take that any day. Hopefully, my other yards will be as good, or sometimes, even, usually, even better. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.